a fossil hay from CFA guys. How's it going? Ashby Gale here. Sorry for the lack of videos lately. I have been, as you can see, working on remodeling my first house. So included, of course, is the Charleston Fossil Adventures office. Uh, ultimately going to be remodeling an outbuilding out way there in the back, but um, it's completely consumed my life. So I have been getting out and collecting uh, but I do apologize for the lack of videos. So for this video for November, uh, I'm going to do kind of a day in the life of a paleontologist during the pandemic. So uh, we're going out today, as you can see, it is raining, unfortunately. I did not really plan this out, but yesterday the forecast said there was going to be zero rain today. So go figure. Um, so. I'm going to get the gear loaded up and then we're just going to kind of go through, uh, find everything. You'll just see one day's worth of finds in this video and um, I'll be getting those sent out here in a few days, but this video will be uploaded before the packages arrive. So you should be watching this before you get your fossils. So that'll be kind of a, a twist, a little bit different than previous months. So let's go. Okay, so we're going to head past the construction debris. And I will ultimately be getting a new outbuilding established. Uh, so that's the one that's ultimately going to be the office. Um, but I'm going to be getting a nice big metal garage here for the kayaks. Uh, so once we get the upstairs renovated, we'll be getting that part squared away for all the gear. Um, during the pandemic, I have been offering the shark tooth sand. Unfortunately, this batch has gotten wet, so I need to let that dry out before sending it off. But we will go ahead and grab the kayak gear, get my paddle here, and I will be coming back for the blue kayak. Go ahead and grab the life jacket. All right, so we've got bilge pump to bail out the kayak today, mostly from rainwater. One life jacket with safety whistle. And we'll grab a knee pad as well for finding all those tiny teeth. I'll be getting wet enough as it is on the trip, so we'll get all of the life jackets and tow rope in there in the cab to make sure it's nice and dry, at least to begin with. All right, one kayak coming right up. Strapped down and ready to go. Tour with the paleontologist. Hey, that's me. A very important part of any day where I go out on the river is my mental checklist. So I always will get my gear in the truck and see if I have left anything out. So we have got a kayak to travel down the river with. We have got a paddle to paddle down the river with. Believe it or not, I have left before without a paddle. I've had to turn around and take an hour to get back and get back to the landing. So we've got the paddle and the kayak, two very important things. Third most, life jackets, got the bilge pump, got the tow rope, got the glove for my hand, got food, got water, very important provisions, water shoes. I forgot the water shoes. Let's go grab those. Want to make sure that I have good closed toed shoes so that I don't get chopped up by any oysters. All right, in the bed they go. Uh, kayak, paddle, life jacket, gloves, tow rope, sh water shoes, food, water, collection apron, very important. Extra Ziploc bags for fossils for all the Patreon members. Rain jacket, wearing it.
keys, wallet, phone, holding it. Hat. No sunscreen today, don't think I'll be seeing the sun. Truck, obvious. I think that might be about it. I'm going to go inside, grab some more things, and we'll hit the road. All right, guys, we got everything packed up, so we're good to go. Hopefully these showers will end here in a little bit. Um, looks like the weather system is going to be moving through here in the next hour or so. So I will see y'all at the landing. And we're here at the river. So water is a little chilly today. Probably should have brought the rubber boots, but we'll get out there before the tide is completely low. All right, guys, you can see the kayak behind me. I've walked 10 feet and already I have something really, really cool. Check this out. Right there, a massive, beautiful Angustidens. Oof, man, excuse the shaking of the camera. There are some terrible no seams out here today. But yes, ow, man. Oof. Oh man, I should have brought long pants. But that is an excellent one being shipped out to one of your, one of the Benedini members for the month of November. Beautiful. If you'd like to sign up for Patreon uh, subscription fossil crates in the month of December, it is a great Christmas present. You can uh, head on over to the link in the description and have some pretty incredible fossils mailed to your door each month. Wonderful birthday present. And all kinds of things like I'm finding out here today will be shipped straight to your door. A little dolphin bone fragment right there. Speaking of Christmas presents, a reminder that I have a book called A Beachcomber's Guide to Fossils, identifying many of the fossils you can find from Texas to Florida, all the way up to New Jersey. It is $29.95, published by the University of Georgia Press, and uh, it was supposed to come out in uh, November, but unfortunately with the coronavirus, that pushed back the publication date. So it is now coming out on December 15th. Um, so pre-orders are live now and it's an excellent Christmas present for that fossil loving friend or family member. So I will include a link for that in the description as well. And if you would like to see some more fossil content on another social media platform, we do have a an Instagram page under Fossils ABG, standing for a Beachcomber's Guide. So you can go check us out on there and see some of the fossils uh, that I find on this trip highlighted on that page. You've got another Angustidens. Almost has the whole route there. Still not too bad. There's a nice little blade. Partial, but still, still a big one. And no joke, right next to it, I just turned to start looking again. Nice little Mako. It's a lower tooth from Isurus oxyrhynchus. Here's one you don't see every day. This is a dermal ossicle from an extinct leatherback sea turtle that lived here 30 million years ago. That's a neat one. And looks like there's a big snaggle too. Excellent. And I should have just kept the camera rolling. There's a nice big blade from a Carcaracles shark. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna keep it rolling here, see if we have any others in the immediate area. Of course, that's a surefire way to jinx it. It's 
see. That one's a little dolphin rib bone. There's a little extinct long tooth tiger shark tooth. Some triangular phosphate. A little bit of a clam shell. Oh, and there we go. Another partial carcaracles tooth. Rock. It's always worth looking in the water, especially on days when it's really clear like this. You might see a big one hiding down in there. Ah, there we go. Boy, that would have been a beauty if he was complete. Look at those colors. Another Carcaracles tooth, most likely from Angustinus. Okay, well, I'll pick it back up if I see something else cool. Okay, I just spotted one under the water. Can you see it? Right there. Boom. That is a pretty big chunk of blade. Look at that, we've got another gorgeous lower tooth from Isurus oxyrhynchus. Nice little mako here. The tip on that one is really, really sharp. Nice. Look at this, the sun has come out and illuminated a beautiful great white. Ah, oh, classic great white that you find on the beach. Root is gone. It's a really thin, fragile root. And unfortunately, they usually don't stand up to much wave action, but a really nice one. Even has a few lightning stripes on it from some plant roots. Oh, we've got another killer right here. Look at the colors on that one. Man, you gotta love those browns. This one might be from the direct precursor to Megalodon, Chubutensis, based on those more rounded cusplets. But it is also a possibility that it is uh, juvenile angustidens, which can get some pretty rounded out accessory cusplets there. Um, so, either way, a nice find. We started off the day with a pretty nice fish vertebra, and here's another. Pretty big. Let's see if it's all there. Oh, yes it is. Boy, that's beautiful. One thing that concerns me is that it might not be fossilized, but I will get it cleaned up and let you know if it is or not. Pretty cool, probably something like a big drum. And there's a big caudal vertebra from a whale. That is really cool. They don't have very many processes coming off of these tail vertebrae. Um, there are a couple, but they're pretty reduced. So this is a nice complete one. Here's a neat one. Nice little shark vertebra from some type of carcariniform shark embedded in a phosphate nodule. That is really cool. Don't find too many of these still within the matrix. Here's 
Hmm, the gods must be crazy. This one is really camouflaging in there, but look at that beautiful little sea urchin. Oh yeah, it's a complete one too. Wow, that's fantastic. I'll share a photo of this one all cleaned up. So this is pretty great. I uh, went to a different site after being at the first one for a couple hours. And I got here and I saw a bunch of footprints all through the sand. So it's like, okay, there were people here before me. Chances are they were looking for shark teeth and pretty much guaranteed exclusively just looking for shark teeth. They're not picking up any, any of these other fossils. Well, you would think if someone spent a good bit of time on a stretch of beach, they would have seen a big one like that. Pretty cool. And right next to it, a little dolphin bone. And I thought I saw one other thing up here. Um, it's just gonna be some phosphate. I was hoping for a whale ear bone, but we will see if I can find one before the day is out. Okay, wish granted. I found a dolphin ear bone. This one is the bulla. And the mate to this ear bone inside the skull of the largest of the ear bones would be the periodic. I know it looks like a lot like a rock, but there are some discernible features. Oh, oh man, the bugs are terrible. Um, are some discernible features that help uh, determine this one whew, is going to be a bone uh, compared to a phosphate nodule. Nice. Well, my alarm just went off warning me that it's unfortunately time to go. I'm about an hour out from sunset and a decent amount of time to paddle back to the landing. But I have got a pretty large collection of fossils in here, some really cool things. Get them cleaned up and posted here at the end of the video. So for you, that's going to be in uh, about 30 seconds. For me, that'll be in a few hours. So. See you here in a little bit. Okay, well, it comes as no surprise to me that I am driving back in the dark. This is a pretty frequent occurrence uh, in a typical day of my life. Um, today I did get started a little late, probably left the house around uh, 12, 12.30, but uh, usually the kayak trips they, they might run 1 to 6 or 12 to 5, and especially now in the winter months. Uh, sunset today was at 5.13, so it was dark as I was putting the kayak in the truck, and I'm glad to be inside the heat. So let's go on home, get these fossils cleaned up, and see what all cool things we have. Okay guys, well, I lied. This is going to be two days in the life of a paleontologist. I was a little bit too dark when I got back from the boat landing and it was also still raining. So my outdoor washing routine for the fossils, uh, it's never fun in the dark, in the rain. So we're at the next day and we're gonna go ahead and wash out the fossils and see what some of the cooler ones are. And naturally, since I'm between houses at the moment, I have misplaced all of my strainers, so I'm going to just have to use a paint screen at the moment for some of the larger fossils. A lot of people ask uh, what the best method of cleaning and preserving fossils uh, is, what the best method is whenever they get home, and honestly, for ones that come out of the river, they are pretty well phosphatized, so that means they are relatively solid, um, at least here in South Carolina from our lag deposits that we're getting these from. So I really do nothing more than just a quick rinse. If it is a larger bone that is relatively porous, I will submerge that in a bucket of water to desalinate the bone. I've done that with a couple of the larger fossils, and when I mean larger, I'm saying ones that are at least a foot long. Uh, a lot of the 
megalodon tooth divers around here will do that with the teeth. Uh, it's a good thing to do basically if you don't on some of the items that you might want to preserve. Over time, increases and decreases in the humidity will cause salt in the bone, salt in the fossil to crystallize. And just like uh, freeze and thaw ice wedging with rock faces, that will basically, the salt crystals will expand and uh, cause bits of the bone to chip off over time. So I do recommend that if your pieces are coming from saltwater areas. And here's some of the most unique things from the trip. I was able to verify this vertebra is going to be modern. Um, oh, looks like we have a little critter, unfortunately, that came back in the mud. Um, I'll clean him out of there, but I uh, shipped this off to someone who would like it. I did get some fossilized fish vertebrae, though. So a couple of nice ones right there. Uh, some of the nicer shark vertebrae, that one down there. And this one just has some really good growth lines on it. You might see that one featured on our fossils ABG Instagram later on in the month. This one that uh, someone might think is a tooth or a tusk is the tip of a Cyrenian rib bone. So that is uh, kind of like a manatee or a sea cow. All right, got some nice big shark copra lights or fossilized poop here. That nice scroll design. Yeah, you can see some of the layers on that side. This little bone fragment's cool. That has those little predation marks on it or scavenging marks from sharks that were feeding on the skull of little dolphin. Some joined ray teeth right here from an eagle ray. Got a good number of shark teeth from some nice angustodons in there. That great white. Did manage to get a giant thresher from the Miocene, albeit a little broken. Today was the day for mako sharks. Got one, two, three, four, five really nice makos. I did manage to get a tiger shark tooth from the modern species. That might be feeding damage. It could be damage from the river. Um, on the dredge localities, it's a little harder to tell feeding damage from post-fossilization fractures. Um, you really just want to look for ones that come directly out of the deposit with uh, broken tips to be able to say for certain that that was uh, feeding damage. Got some interesting fish bones as well. That's one. Uh, there's another as well from something like a larger tuna or billfish. Nice half of an atlas vertebra from a small dolphin. There is that shark vertebra within a phosphate nodule. Thermal ossicle from the leatherback sea turtle caudal whale vertebra, uh, manatee rib bone, and then another shark vertebra here. And then these two guys are probably going to head off to the college because they have a uh, formation still attached to them. This one I didn't show on camera. This is a bulla, tympanic bulla from a whale, or actually a more like a small toothed dolphin but really nice here with the rock still inside it. Likely going to be the Ashley Formation, which dates back 28 to 30 million years. Pretty cool. And then this big vertebra from, likely from Angustodons. 
Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. This video is for the month of November and we like to give thanks in November. A huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters, whether you supported me for a month, two months, or you've been with me since March. It truly has helped uh, my business stay afloat during the pandemic. If you want to get some of the fossils that you see here and you're watching this video, you don't support me on Patreon, uh, it's never too late. I've got that link in the description. I'll put it right here as well. But just head on over to Patreon and type in Charleston Fossil Adventures and you can find my business and receive fossils that I collect each month, every month, and receive fossil identification as well. So it's something that I take a little more time out of my day to do for people and I hope they appreciate it. Um, I know many people are taking advantage of the system. It can be as simple as 10 uh, photos of fossils a month or a one hour virtual private identification session of your finds at home. Uh, had a couple people take really good advantage of this and uh, that one is at the Benedini level, so that is the $100 a month level. But any amount is appreciated, anything at all. Uh, if you like these videos, please uh, thumb them up, give them a share, uh, subscribe to the channel, and of course, like they say, hit that bell to enable notifications whenever I upload a new one. I try and be regular, but as you can see with my debris pile back there. The home renovations are kind of slowing down a little bit of the fossil hunting, but I am still getting out from my Patreon supporters. So thanks so much, everyone. Y'all have a good one and happy hunting.